Hello guys and welcome to another with Zamoleta. In today's video I would like to talk about Expedite. I've been getting a lot of questions on basically Expedite topic related, a lot of emails. Uh, thank you guys for your emails. Uh, I'm really sorry but I can't respond to emails as fast as I can to uh, questions that's asked on YouTube. Um, to be honest, uh, I guess I don't have to even really say it but you can tell how busy I am. You know, I stay pretty busy with everything that I do and I will have no life to really be able to be 100% cut up on everything like emails, uh, all social media and stuff like that. It's, it's quite impossible. So um, realistically, I had to choose one and that one is YouTube. So, um, you know, you could ask as long of a question as you want on with YouTube and I'll see it right away. Uh, now, there's many, many benefits of uh, asking me questions uh, at YouTube uh, because if I do answer that question for you, which I always do, um, other viewers, uh, they like to, you know, like look at comments and stuff, see what kind of questions was asked. So that helps answer their questions that they may have uh, and stuff like that. And then they could ask a question that they, uh, you know, like really would like to know about. Man, my allergies started kicking in. You maybe noticed I had like, a, you know, my red eyes right away. Um, um, yeah, it's been bothering me for some reason uh, these days, but it's okay. That being said, uh, one of the main questions that I have um, about uh, Expedite is, um, do you have to have a LLC uh, to buy a van? Um, I don't know. Uh, why is that a question? Because you could buy a van, car, anything you want. You don't have to have an OC. But I understand the question. You're trying to find out whether you need to have your own company before you get your you know, van and stuff like that off the ground. Um, my answer to that is no. You don't have to. Um, I'm going to keep uh, this video like uh, I'm going to do some examples. Uh, I'm going to try to make it in a way if you're almost broke. Let's just say it like that. Uh, what can you do uh, in order to get into expediting stuff and how much money actually it, it would cost you uh, in order to do that? When I started expediting the second time, I was completely broke. Uh, shoot, the first time I started out, I was completely broke. Um, and I just want to tackle that. I think that's going to be like the most important because um, I understand uh, <clears throat> a lot of people are struggling out there. Uh, there's a lot of expediters that are struggling. Uh, I guess not so much, um, <laughs> but yes, they do if they don't do it the right way. Um, but a lot of people, you know, it's they're struggling, you know, bills, problems, financial problems and stuff like that. And you're trying to see, you know, what kind of opportunities do you have to try to start something to <clears throat> make, cha make changes, you know, uh, in your life in order to get to that next uh, level in your life and uh, to follow your dream. Like, what are you, where are you trying to go and stuff like that in your life? And that's where I was when I was trying to begin, but I'm thinking, man, I got all these dreams, all these desires, uh, all these things that I want to buy, and it's going to cost thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands. Uh, life is expensive. Um, just getting a car and a house alone. I mean, there you go. You don't have to go really far, and those are the two necessities. I think the house is going to be like the biggest purchase that we're going to make, um, unless you're going to go towards a supercar type of purchase, uh, which is on my list. <laughs> um, that's going to be expensive. I guess, but if you're trying to get started and you're like thinking, man, like what to do? Like I am completely broke. I don't have no money for a Sprinter van uh, or any kind of van for that matter. Like what is the best scenario for me? Like what should I do? What kind of company should I work for? How am I able to afford insurance on this? You know, what if things didn't go well? Uh, what can I do to survive? And guys, I have just a thing for you guys. I, I know exactly what you need. Uh, exactly how you could survive uh, even if you think you're not going to be able to fill your your, your van up uh, with diesel uh, or gas I know how you could do it uh, even if you don't have a credit card you know I'm, I'm, te I'm telling you guys like, you're completely broke <laughs> you know but I didn't say bad history bad credit history okay that's that's totally something else you'll either have to have uh, bad credit history but you have your own van or good credit history and you're just broke, <laughs> you know, so be, you know, those things. So, uh, I had a little bit of both. Um, now what do you do when you have excellent credit history, but you're broke? 
whatever changes you did in your life, whatever decisions you made, right now you're broke. Maybe you're gonna feel, maybe you're gonna have like a little bit, you know, better situation eventually. But you can't afford to buy a vent for cash. Uh, what, what do you do? Um, my advice here is, and this is if you're you're willing to uh, like do anything. You know, climb a mountain, you know, to get it done. You know, like you're thinking, man, I'm willing to just get it and work and work and, you know, until I make it. Okay. Then to you, I say, if you're ready for the next five, six years to hustle, buy a van. Um, Buy yourself a Mercedes Sprinter van. Do not get a ProMaster. The only one that I would recommend you get besides the Mercedes would be a Ford uh, Transit EcoBoost gasoline model. So those are your two options. Uh, ProMaster just sucks. Sorry, I have friends that own ProMaster. Sorry, they suck. Uh, You will not survive with a ProMaster. You will completely fail. Sorry to tell you, but that's just uh, the name of the game. Uh, be prepared to have problems at 100,000 or less with a ProMaster. That's it. Uh, the EcoBoost, um, according to everything that I've seen, those uh, Fords, um, 500,000 miles, easy. Sure, they have problems, you know, not they're not that huge, very little, and it's a lot easier to survive with them. I think actually, if somebody's thinking about starting out a company, with drivers and they're gonna put vans and Fords, EcoBoost, they're gonna make it, I think. Um, but that's still a one shot, you know, it's, you have to have all your ducks in a row, you know. <clears throat> but uh, I'm a definitely a fan of uh, Sprinter vans. I would get a diesel. Uh, I think diesels, a lot of times you hear that they are million mile vehicles and that's for good reason. Uh, the diesel vans, they're used to driving very long distances, uh, basically just like as long as you're driving it, not just sitting there idling it, they're fine. Like they're not gonna overheat on you. You just keep going and going and going and going and going on these are like non-stop. It's completely fine. It's made to work like a horse. Um, I don't know about the Ford. When it comes to that, the typically the gasoline models, uh, they are not designed to run, 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 run. Diesel is, you know. So get a diesel if you can. Um, bad thing about diesels is the particular filter, and that's not the worst. The DEF is the worst one. Those have lots of problems, sadly to say. Um, there is solutions to those problems. Uh, they may not be legal ones. I don't know the actual legalities when it comes to DEF, um, when it comes to particulate filter. Is it legal to get rid of them? Uh, certainly, if you do get rid of it and in your state you have to pass inspection, uh, probably that's going to cause some problems. Um, probably going to award you warranty if you do that. Um, you know, but that being said, there is places out there that have delete kits for these systems. Do I recommend deleting it right away? No. Um, delete it when you actually have an issue with it. Run the heck out of it till it's time, you know, for you to start messing with it. Like if if you're going to start having problems with it under warranty, let the dealer fix it and just move on. Um, but if it's going to be outside the warranty and they're like, yeah, you got to install a DF system, it's going to cost you seven grand, five to seven grand, about 5,000 for Fords, about between five and seven for Mercedes. Um, then find yourself somebody that's going to do it for $1,500 and just delete your system. That's what I would do. Legal or not, you got to survive. You got to do what you got to do, you know. So um, I would just get rid of it then. Don't let it bother you till then. Uh, now, I normally don't recommend buying a, buying a brand new van. Notice that I said if you're completely broke, but you have good credit history, and you're willing to do whatever it takes to get it done. Only then get it. Uh, getting a van for payment, it's a huge responsibility. Um, you can't let this fact uh, escape you uh, where you're thinking, oh, I got a new van, now it's not going to break down. Oh, that's all not true. Uh, it's going to break down on you, under warranty, 
and after the warranty. Uh, and it's going to be more of a headache if you never worked on one or if you're going to have somebody else work on it for you, especially when it's outside your warranty, because it's just going to be very, very bothersome. But know one thing, Sprinter diesels, the check engine light, a lot of times they come on and they stay on. It will still run. These sprinters, man, they're almost falling apart. They're still running. They're rusted out. They're still running. Like a lot of times they're like unstoppable. They just keep going and going and going and going and going. Like you could drive these things till the wheels fall off. They're not going to fall off. I got one that's a million hundred eighty two thousand. Original tie rods, original all this stuff, bearings, um, rear differential, everything, you know, those things are original. Uh, now, I did replace the engine, uh, the transmissions from another van, but I replaced the transmission at a million, 50,000 miles, original transmission, and engine at 844,500 miles. So, besides that, like all these other things, the original, sure, I'm driving, steering wheel's moving about two inches, play, but it's driving. You know, and I was able to take something like that and make money. Uh, but right now, it's not a story about that. Uh, it is a story how to make it an expedite when you're just starting out. You're broke, but you're but you're on fire. Like you you want to get it done. Like you want to make money. You wanna you wanna just just buy it. Just keep going, going, going till basically till you accumulate like so many miles that your warranty expires. But you made you made a lot of money, but guys. Expedite is a business. This is not a job. You will feel like you're working at a job. But do not mistake this for a job. This is not a 9 to 5. This is a business. And in any business, you should expect to work outside working hours. You know, you got to do everything to survive in this business. Um, I'm not talking about doing cut road rates. This is not going to work in this business. This is going to drive you to break this is not this is not landscaping this is not trying to cut somebody's yard for twenty dollars instead of 25 or vice versa you know you will literally fail if you don't drive for the right amount of money and i have a good video on that where i make an example of like what to expect and guys that video is not far from the truth those of you guys that expedite and you know how to do your numbers you will see that my numbers are correct i think into account um you know somebody having their own van for payments or you don't uh that video is called how much do expeditors make and basically do not accept 65 cents per mile because you're just gonna be breaking even don't do it you're just not gonna make the money um as a matter of fact don't work less than 80 cents um that being said you can take 75 cents in some areas where you have to get out um you know uh 65 no do not if you must take 70 maybe like out of laredo but that place is such a myth i always get out for 80 cents everywhere and i don't have any issues with it whatsoever if i was to have a brand new van laredo would have been 80 cents straight and the other areas would be like 90 95 cents a dollar you know do not try to go for any less than that um with the brand new van i drive an old van and my priorities are pretty high and uh, I will make money as good as any new van, if not better. Well, actually make better than new vans. Um, so here's something to consider. Your van will start breaking down in one year. You have to be ready for those breakdowns. In about one year, you're going to accumulate about 150 to 180,000 miles. I know. Sounds crazy. So you, your warranty might expire before you even get your year done with. So you need to plan ahead. You need to basically make as much money as possible out of it. Write down all your expenses. Um, put the money aside. Be ready for those expenses. But not to scare you guys. Sprinters are very low maintenance. And I know some of you guys are like, what? But you have so many breakdowns, you know, like and stuff. They are low maintenance, guys. I'm telling you. They are low maintenance. I've owned anything from a six-cylinder to uh, five cylinder. Here's where the high maintenance comes in. And the high maintenance comes in when you visit the mechanic. And when they start telling you stuff that will just make you spend, spend, spend money. Guys, I mean, I don't know how I even like put this down to you. Like, this is not, 
a supercar that you're gonna have to take on an autobahn or a racetrack that you need to compete with like man with the precision of supercars hypercars this is a cargo van this is a truck it's meant to take a beating it's meant not to be 100% fixed at all times you have to fix what you need to get fixed for the lowest bottomest price that you could possibly fix it to keep it running do not buy expensive tires do not buy expensive brakes do not buy expensive belts forget buying original mercedes manufactured parts buy the chinese crap do not spend more money than you have to guys i'm telling you i'm telling you this uh, this is kind of funny to me like i, I bought a sprinter just now 2012 4600 bucks this guy is like i serviced that nothing but mercedes Thirty-five hundred dollars on this uh, transmission here, torque converter. He says, thirty-five for a torque converter. Thirty-eight hundred dollars new um, catalytic converter, brand new turbo, twenty-five hundred dollars. And all the, like he's listening to me, like all these things he spent. He's like nothing. I buy nothing but OEM. I order straight from Germany. You know, he's making a big deal. Maybe just talking it up, like I'm gonna like buy all the stuff. But I'm thinking, that is so crazy. Like, why would you do that? You know. Like, don't buy a starter, like, more than 150 bucks. As a matter of fact, if you could buy a starter for, like, 100 bucks, do it. Don't buy an alternator more than 250 bucks. You could buy one under $200. You know, you could buy, like, all these, like, like fuel filters. Man, don't buy it for 150 bucks. You could get fuel filters 25 bucks uh, less. Like, you have to shop around. You have to look at these things. Um, one thing that I did make it easier for you guys is is this. I have become an associate with Amazon for a reason so that I can um, technically program my own website and do HTML text embedding. That means I could take HTML text that I will generate for a certain product that I like that will save you money and I could embed it into my website. I did it for the reason it was free for me to do that um there is some money that i could make from it because there's no other way around it if it was free i would do it you know but you have to become an associate in order to have this work you have to have a website you have to do all kinds of things like that um here's what i did i did a page nothing but sprinter parts there's computers of any kind that you could imagine there's all kind of parts i even included more expensive parts and the cheap parts so you could really quickly compare i took the whole amazon i spent the whole day and I have searched for all the parts. I put everything in order for you guys. Oil changes, transmission changes, you know, whatever. Whatever you got going on, I got it there. And the prices are so much less expensive. Like, you could just basically compare. And you want to buy on eBay? You want to compare versus uh, Amazon? Click on my link, you know, check it out and stuff like that. Go maybe, you know, buy on eBay if it's cheaper or whatever. But I like Amazon because it, it's uh, if you have a Prime membership, it's free shipping uh, to you. It is fast shipping returns no questions asked you don't like the stuff they'll give you like a little label stick it on the free send it off if you don't like it there is a lot of you know things like that that is really important and it saves a lot of time so i use amazon pretty much for everything so you know go to like zimaletta.com check that page out with sprinter parts so that being said that is there so you could save money so you could actually buy the cheaper parts than buying more expensive because guys just service and this we're, we're talking servicing just air filters just cabin filters just fuel filters just transmission filters you know just these little things if you're gonna go buy them at the dealer they're gonna be expensive even parts store it's gonna be expensive unless you have an account now i have an account and i buy stuff from o'reilly's uh, all the time um especially if i need it right away you know i could find it cheaper online of course so um you know that being said, guys, it's important to structure your business the right way. Another thing I do want to point out, if you will be buying a van, highly consider what's going to be the fuel economy. I am not a fan of a six-cylinder sprinter. It is a great sprinter. It will run like at least 500,000 miles before breaking down. Uh, the one I got, uh, I think it's like 550,000 miles and it's broken, you know, whatever reason. So you could at least tell 
hey, original part doesn't really help it. It's broken. The best one that I like is five cylinder. That is the best one. This is gonna run a million miles easy if you take care of it. Like the least amount of problems out of five cylinder. Even though yes, <laughs> it will have plenty of problems. But guys, keep in mind, these are used vans. Of course, they're gonna have problems. Like, what do you expect? But at least there's no, uh, there's no, uh, you know, like uh, those extra features that that has. This is simple. You just take care of the engine, take care of transmission, EGR, three hundred fifty bucks if you need it. You know, whatever. Put it on and keep going. Uh, now, if you can find a four cylinder model diesel, get it. Um, that is my next favorite. Um, that engine itself, mm, not a huge fan. Uh, in that engine, I don't know nothing about it. I think I think it's great. I would own it for sure. You know, and I would I would learn it up and everything like that. Why am I really recommending that engine? That engine is so economical. It is just as economical as the five-cylinder Sprinter, guys. Uh, it is that economical, so it's important. Why is that? Why is it so important? Well, it could cost you ten thousand dollars less in fuel every single year by owning a four-cylinder versus a six-cylinder. That makes a big difference. Now that pretty much covers your payment. Um, so you know that being said, my van cost me twenty thousand dollars per year to fuel up. Now if this was a six-cylinder, it cost me thirty thousand dollars. And if you're trying to be competitive and you're trying to drive as much as possible to get all the loads, you know, as much as possible so you can make all the money uh, that is possible, then you're going to accumulate some miles. Miles means money you have to spend for diesel. So, you you know, with a six-cylinder, with driving the same miles like, like I drive, it's $30,000 a year in fuel. So, if you took rates cheaper than I did, if I take 80 cents, I'm still winning. You take it. Even if you take it 80 cents, you still made less money than I did. So imagine if you're taking it 65 with those same engines, you're you're gonna just go broke. All you do is not have enough money to fix your van. And what is that gonna do? You're gonna park it. You're gonna park it. You might trade it in, uh, and you're gonna be at such a loss. I already seen this happen, guys. I I have a friend. That's what they did. He bought already three Sprinters, and it's just nothing but. Keep trading it in, losing, 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 losing. Lost all, all kinds of money, um, you know, with that. Guys, this video is long, I know. But expediting is not a simple topic. Um, I'm constantly asked, like, what is better, Sprinter or ProMaster? You know, I think we already got this thing down. ProMaster, just no good. If you feel differently, write in the comments below why you feel differently. Uh, I just talked to a Russian guy that watches my channel a few weeks ago. He told me, he just bought it this year, ProMaster. He's been driving the heck out of it. He's already put a third engine in there. And guess what? He says, I'm afraid to drive it now. He just put it in. He's afraid to drive it. He parked it, bought himself a Sprinter van, and he's driving a Sprinter. I mean, what does that tell you? You know how many stories like this I could tell you? I don't want to even waste your time or mine. Uh, it's just, this is not what my channel is about. Uh, I am a Mercedes sprinter fan for a reason not because they pay me it's because it's it's a workhorse that's it, that's what it's designed to do it's diesel that's what it's designed to do now there is a electric mercedes sprinter out there uh i don't know how long it takes to order one i don't know how much it is uh when i find out i will make a video on that now getting that thing and doing like local driving oh man like that would be like phenomenal i think uh, you're not going to make that much money doing local stuff, but you're going to save so much money in diesel because you're not buying diesel and you're going to be with your family. So, plus it's potential of making that thing, uh, self-driving eventually that the van could just go to work for you. I mean, we could keep on dreaming, right? That you'll sleep and the van's going to work for you because it's electric. It, it's autonomous. It just goes and makes deliveries and stuff and you, you're sleeping. This could happen. I mean, Tesla talked about this technology. You could convert any vehicle into like by $1,500 and that's it. I don't know. I didn't research it myself, so I don't know. And plus all this technology is kind of new right now. We're in that age, uh, information age that, you know, things are expanding, improving and stuff like that. Now, what is the next topic I want to talk about? It seems like it's just, it's just a lot of stuff. I'm just going to make this a very long video, but it covers everything. Um, you know, from starting at pretty much LLC or having it or not having it, you know, which I said, let's not have it. Uh, so buying a van when you broke, we cover that. What kind of van we should buy, we cover that. Uh, what kind of license do you need? Let's cover that. 
you need a regular license, guys. A regular, plain, old license. Whatever your state gave you right now and you have a driver license, that's good enough. Um, when you register your vehicle uh, at a DMV or whatever it's called for you, because I'm sure it's called differently in some places, um, register it for 10,000 pounds. Um, if you can get a regular plate, get it. Uh, a lot of times... Um, they will sell you a commercial tag. It's going to cost a little bit more money for the commercial tag. But if you could get a weighted, well, a weighted tag, that's pretty much a commercial tag. If you could get a normal tag, but registration says 10,000 pounds, do that. A little bit less trouble. If you park it somewhere, you know, cops will look at the commercial tag, might give you a ticket because no commercial vehicle allowed. Uh, if you're gonna have four higher tags, you might have problem, you know, parking in your neighborhood. People don't like that for some reason. Regular tags, it's just kind of like, you know, you own a family van. Now, if you could get a Sprinter with windows everywhere, get it because uh, it's going to be important. Uh, if you go to New York, uh, New York will pull you over in a heartbeat if your van has like no windows. If you're driving in the left lane, uh, especially in Long Island, um, you know, you can't go on this, uh, what is this called, like Park Avenues or whatever it's called i forgot what it's called over there but in, in new york it's nothing but those type of roads and bridges you can't go on them certain exits commercial vehicles can go on and your van considered commercial it's tickets 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 guys in new york so i try to avoid new york i don't like to go there um i went there and every time i got a ticket and i'm very careful um um uh, basically, let's cover a company. I did say you can work for a company if you're completely broke, uh, you know, and this is going to be a new, you know, a large company. Something uh, like Allstate Express. Uh, I think they're a great company. I hardly mention them. I don't work with them. Uh, they took care of me really good. Uh, another one that I would recommend is if you could get, if you could get hired by them, load one if you could get hired by them work for them they're awesome um there is bolt express of course pretty nice company do not work with panther you know sorry panther i, I just i just don't like nothing nothing about that company everything that i heard from drivers is just nothing it just seems to me like uh they do nothing but hire drivers uh, and when they do that, it's great for the company. It's bad for the drivers. Basically, your loads are going to be limited. This this market, expedited market, it's really so saturated. Um, it's it's crazy. And I'm making videos to help you guys get in. I mean, imagine how many people watch my videos. There's now thousands. And if if these people are not expedited, they're getting into expedited. I mean, that's just more competition that is created. Uh, now. One thing's for sure, everybody's not going to do it the right way. A lot of people will fail. So I don't want people to fail, at least, you know, for my videos. I want you to watch them and, you know, and and be prepared to kind of like, you know, to expect certain things and to save money so you could stay in business longer, you know, by not taking cheap rates, by not buying very expensive, you know, parts, and you know, things of that nature. Um so anyways, let's say you're going to start working with uh, Allstate Express. What, what's going to happen is uh, they're going to sell you their own insurance. They're going to put their own satellite on your van and they're going to give you a fuel card. Uh, they're going to allow you to do some cash advances before you even made any money, which is, which is great. So if you don't have money for fuel, you could use their fuel card to fuel up. But nothing's free. Uh, you, you'll end up paying a certain percentage, you know, like each time you fuel up or whatever. They're going to charge uh, maybe so many dollars to swipe the card, you know. Um, maybe a little percentage of the total price. But if you broke, um, you know, you're trying to just get, you know, paid and just try to get the ball rolling, that's going to be pretty good. Now, uh, recently I talked to one of my friends that's still with Allstate. Me and him met up when we first started working there. Uh, he still works with them. And he's got a driver now that works with them as well and he still enjoys it still still good and of course he's you know been with them for so long uh he's probably treated with respect they know exactly what's going on and this kind of thing um now if you got a brand new vehicle it's best to work with a company that's big they'll pay you more money uh you might have a little bit less headaches you'll have a little bit more consistent work because you got a new vehicle uh now if you got an old van then 
Allstate Express just might not hire you. Same thing with Bolt, same thing with other companies. Um, you will, however, find a company that will hire you. Believe me, there's about 700 of them. So you just have to find one that will work with you. And if it's a good company, stick with them. If not, be prepared to move. Do not uh, feel that, oh, I just started with them. They're so nice to me. And, uh, you know, uh, like things will improve. They won't improve. I already did that. You could go broke doing that. Where you're working for the company and there's no loads. And they're like, yeah, I'm sorry, we're looking. And, you know, maybe you should take a little bit less money, you know, for this load. You're just too expensive. Guys, they're just doing nothing but lying to you. They're not going to bid the load cheaper just because you want at a cheaper rate. Trust me, they're lying. And they're not going to give you. Like, look, if if they're not lying, they'll send you the paperwork and all the documents to show you how much they're bidding for that. If they're not doing that, and they're, oh, it's a company secret, like we can't share it with them. Guys, they're lying to you. It's as simple as that. Uh, you know, and all they want to do is get you to accept less money. You'll still be with the same competition. Nothing really changed. They're still going to build bid the same rate for you. Uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to create some bonuses for a dispatch on top of their pay. And uh, some of those bonuses, some of those extra pay, of course, the actual dispatch might not, he's going to get like a little cut out of it. Uh, the rest of it's going to go towards paying uh, all the dispatchers uh, regular fees and taking care of their bills. Because a lot of these uh, companies, they are, I mean, they're trying to pay their bills and uh, that's all they care about. Uh, they know that if you don't like it, you quit, there's going to be another one to take your place. And that's true. That's that's what happens. Uh, you know, it's disappointing, uh, you know, as it is. Uh, that's just how it is. They know that there's more drivers out there than companies still. So there's going to be enough drivers for everybody. You know, even if you start out like a new company, you've got to have some some of your own drivers. So I guess this answers like another question. Like every time I get this question, like um, what kind of company can I work with? We just got a van. We're just getting started. What kind of companies? What kind of brokers? Uh, a lot of times uh, the interesting thing about it is people are just getting started, but they're asking me about brokers that they could work with and stuff like that. I'm not sure whether they're like so experienced that they're ready to go to the next level right away and they're just trying to go ahead and start bidding in loads when they really haven't uh, expedited any loads and kind of like not having a really deep understanding as to what does it take to actually do this job uh and right away they try to like you know bid loads which which i applaud i think uh it is great like if you're thinking about doing this as a career it is great to open up a llc uh, it is great to try to find brokers like right away because it will take time to, you know, build it all up uh, with the reputation and everything. And then you're going to do the loads for better price than you can, of course, uh, from uh, these uh, these companies that pay you. Um, but in the beginning, I'd say, you know, don't worry about that. Take your time. Do your research. Just find out all the stuff, you know, kind of like as you go. Uh, it's never too late to try to open up your LLC even after you buy it, like you just open it up uh, you could go ahead and start getting your you know working on getting your MC uh, get all those ducks in a row and you know you know to try to get this thing started but that being said in the beginning you have to build trust uh, with some of these other companies that you work with uh, to establish yourself a little bit because even when you're gonna be a company you might call these companies up one day and say hey uh, you know, can I work with you guys? Uh, like I have my own drivers, you know, do this and that. Uh, can I sometimes, you know, get your loads or whatever, you know, and they could call you up and stuff like that. You know, you could establish, uh, you know, those relationships. Uh, another thing is by working for a big company like Allstate Express, here's the benefit of it. Let's say you later on decide that this van that you're driving, I mean, you weren't really interested in driving. You wanted to put a driver on it. Well, it's simple with that company. You establish yourself. You already drove. Now they know you. They know who it is. And you say, hey, I want to put a driver in. Like, okay, sure. Do you have a driver in mind? No. Okay. We we uh, we have one in mind for you. Would you like us to, you know, let you talk to the driver? Sure. And you talk to them. You find out what they want. And then, then they pass through orientation. The company takes care of everything. So they start uh, working on your van, making you money, like, right away. So, uh that really simplifies things because you don't have to worry about things like insurance and taking care of the stuff. All you're going to be getting is uh, money uh, that's going to be rolling in, you know. Uh, 
something that I'm not doing uh, right now um, because I, I see other ways of actually doing income, uh, but this video is not about that. Man, these allergies are killing me, uh, but I hope you guys like this video. Um, I hope I covered everything. Let me know what I didn't cover, but I just simply wanted to cover what does it take to just get in the business and start doing it? Guys, that's what it takes. You will learn everything else that you need to do and orientation and everything like that. Um, and I will talk about other things. You know, I already talked about it, but I'll make fresh videos when you're working and stuff, what to expect and, you know, this kind of stuff. I will make one on the used van. Like, if you're going to be getting a used one, you have cash. Uh, like, what to expect and, you know, that kind of thing. Like, what kind of van to get and stuff like that. And... Yeah, you know, I think it's important to point it out because uh, that's the way I actually did it. Uh, to be honest, getting a brand new van, I didn't know the stuff that I just told you guys. Now I do. Uh, I failed. Uh, in the two years, I got this van uh, repossessed uh, because economy crashed. Uh, did I foresee this? No, economy crashed. So uh, I was not able to make payments, so I got it repossessed. So uh long story short there you go uh, surprise surprise so i've learned i've learned not to not to get stuff uh like that uh but i don't i don't regret it uh if i would have to do it again i would still uh, get a brand new van uh start out but hopefully have more information but i obviously i can't go back in time and and use this information that i have now to try to uh, survive but when i bought the van i don't know how to work on it i don't know nothing about vans uh, of course now i do so um that being said, if you do buy a van, uh, stay in touch with my channel. Uh, hopefully, I could answer some of your questions and comments or have some videos that can help you, you know, maintain your vehicle uh, so that it's going to perform for you. I will make some videos, what kind of breakdowns to expect from these vans. As I did say, they are low maintenance, but I think that video needs to be a maintenance video. What kind of maintenance can you expect from a Sprinter? Stuff like that. So... Take care of yourself, guys. God bless you, and see you guys in my next video.